Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you my favorite perfume from each house and this idea was inspired actually by somebody on Instagram who had written me a little bit earlier today and asked me what my favorite perfume from Versace was and it got me thinking that I frequently have people writing me and asking me you know what is your favorite parfum de Marly? What is your favorite Tom Ford? And things like that so I thought you know this is a really nice video idea so I thought I'll just sit down today and let you guys know my favorite perfume or couple of perfumes from each house in no particular order. So if this is your first time on my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Alithia and on this channel we do talk a lot about perfume. If that's something that you like, I would love if you would consider subscribing. And with that out of the way, let's get started in today's video. So the first house is Versace. Why not start out with Versace? And my favorite Versace perfume is definitely Crystal Noir Eau de Toilette. This is a perfume that I do have in my collection. It's one that I absolutely love. It is also my boyfriend's current absolute favorite perfume on me. I think if he had to go through my collection and pick only one date night perfume for myself to wear, it would definitely be Versace Crystal Noir. Um, and it makes me feel very sexy and sensual and feminine and beautiful when I wear it. And it's kind of like a warm, spicy coconutty type of fragrance with a little bit of a peppery touch I think that there's also some cardamom in there and it's just a really beautiful fragrance it's actually very difficult to describe it's just one that you have to experience and for those of you who will ask yes I do prefer the eau de toilette a lot more than the eau de parfum for the next house, why don't we jump to something that's a little bit more high end, and this is Bond number no. nine. So my favorite two Bond number no. nine, and I'm gonna go with two because it's kind of hard for me to decide which one I like better, are Greenwich Village and Tribeca. Now I will share something with you guys. I really regret letting go of my Bond perfumes. I'm not even sure why I let them go at this point. I think I just felt that I didn't wear them enough. And as somebody who loves perfumes and sort of misses having a larger perfume collection, those are two perfumes that I sort of aspire to bring back because they truly are two works of art. They are incredible fragrances. One of them is a little bit more fresh and floral, but I think there's also praline or something in it. That would be the Greenwich. So it's like fresh and clean and floral, but also has like a a little bit of a gourmand touch and it's very sweet it's very feminine it smells expensive and then Tribeca is just one of the most beautiful vibrant hazelnut caramel I think jasmine fragrances that I've ever smelled and it just smells incredible and you guys just don't be surprised if you see Bond 9 back in my collection. I am considering allowing myself to just go with it and just allow myself to grow a collection that I can be proud of again instead of having like a minimalist collection. And so if you see Bond back in my collection, don't be surprised. So those are my two favorite Bond perfumes. So next we have the House of Chanel and I do have a couple of Chanel perfumes in my collection currently and I have to say that Chanel is one of my favorite fragrance houses. I just think that they are classy and timeless and elegant and you really just can't go wrong and there's so many beautiful mass pleasing scents. But definitely the Chanel perfume that is at the top of the list for me currently is Gabrielle Essence. I absolutely love that fragrance. It's a really beautiful white floral, yellow floral with some other facets going on. It's actually quite a complex perfume. There's some fruity nuances and it's just a really beautiful kind of a youthful but very classy smelling perfume. I always tell people that if you're tired of Coco Mademoiselle because everybody wears it and you don't want to be wearing Chanso Tendre because it's so popular, do check out Gabrielle Essence. That one is like the best of all worlds. It's classy, it's timeless, but it's also youthful and sort of modern and I just absolutely love it. It is one of my favorite perfumes in my entire collection. So for the next house we have Kaoli and this one is a very easy answer for me and that is Kaoli Vanilla 28. I know it's quite basic and everybody has it but that is definitely my favorite Kaoli perfume. Another one that I really like that I recently discovered is their new Vanilla Royale Sugared Patchouli. I'm actually going to be doing a video on that one coming up very soon and sharing with you a couple of different layering combinations so definitely stay tuned for that but I quite enjoy um, the Vanilla Royale as well, um, but I'll talk more about that in a future video. So my favorite one from Kaoli is definitely the beautiful floral sugary brown sugar vanilla and that is Kaoli Vanilla 28. For the next house we have Maison Margiela and the two perfumes that I love from this house are Jazz Club and Coffee Break. Those are probably my two favorite perfumes. I currently have the Coffee Break in a travel size just because I didn't really feel like I needed the full size bottle. However, you guys, I have really powered through that 
that and I'm over halfway done my travel size and I really want a full-size replica bottle in my collection just because the bottles are so beautiful I absolutely love them I love the labeling the packaging it is just so elegant and gorgeous and they just look so aesthetically pleasing sitting on a tray so I really do want a full-size Maison Margiela and I will probably go with Coffee Break just because that is the one that I tend to wear the most out of all of them. The other one that I love, 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 love is Jazz Club. However, that one does lean a little bit more masculine. In my opinion, that is one of the sexiest perfumes on the planet. Like, it just does something to me I cannot explain. But because it leans a little bit more masculine, I never wore it. So I did end up letting go of my Jazz Club. I also really love it for men. My boyfriend loves that one, and I think it smells amazing on him, but it's not really one of his favorite current rotation perfumes at the moment. So yeah, Jazz Club would probably take my number one spot if you're asking me like which is the best. But for myself personally, I prefer to wear Coffee Break, which is a really nice, cozy, lavender sort of milky coffee scent and it's a little bit unisex but i think it could go either way i prefer it for a woman personally and i just find it to be a very cozy comforting scent that actually helps me have a good sleep which is kind of interesting because it's a coffee perfume but i wear it to bed <laughs> but yeah love that perfume so those are my two favorites from maison margiela Parfum de Marly. Okay, so this is an interesting house because I actually don't have anything from Parfum de Marly anymore in my collection. I have owned a few Parfum de Marly fragrances. I've had Delina, Delina Exclusive, Castilli, Oriana, uh, Delina La Rose. I think I also had Safinade at one point, and I had numerous testers or samples of Atalia or Athalia. Um, and to be honest, you guys, none of the Parfum de Marly at this moment are ones I feel I absolutely need in my collection. Definitely my favorite of all time was Delina Exclusive, but that one is also a very heavy perfume. It's a very strong perfume, and I think I just wore it so much, and I just kind of got sick of the scent. I think I just really wore it out to the point that I didn't want to smell it again. <laughs> I just needed to take a break from it, and after quite a while of not wearing it, I just decided to pass it on to somebody else. So currently I don't actually have a Parfum de Marly, but I would say that Delina Exclusive was probably my favorite of all time from the house. Another one that I am considering getting is the Castilli. I did have a partial bottle, but I'm kind of weird. I like things to be new and fresh, and that one had been a trade with somebody else, and I don't know, I just never really ended up wanting to pick it up off the shelf and I wasn't really sure if it was for me but Cassilli is another perfume that I think is really beautiful and very easy and very mass pleasing but I just don't know if I need it at this point but I really really want a Parfum de Marly in my collection just because I love the house I love the bottle designs I think that they're all incredible fragrances so I think at some point I will have Parfum de Marly back in my collection I just don't know what fragrance that will be and I'm not going to force it because they're pretty expensive Okay, so let's switch gears and talk about something that's a little bit more affordable in the designer world, and that is Narciso. So from Narciso, my two favorite perfumes of all time are definitely Narciso Rouge and Narciso Poudre. And I still really like both of those perfumes. Narciso Poudre was like a beautiful powdery vanilla, and Narciso Rouge was more of a lipsticky, very sensual, like nighttime perfume. Super sexy, super seductive, very mature. Loved it. Um, that one was actually one of my boyfriend's favorites as well. That was one of my date night perfumes perfumes a couple years ago and what happened for me with both of these perfumes is I just kind of got over them I just kind of got tired of them and unfortunately that happens from time to time there was a point if you guys are OG channel watchers you know that there was a point that those were two of my favorite perfumes in the world like nothing was better to me than Narciso Rouge nothing was better than Narciso Poudre and I think I kind of just got tired of the musk the muskiness I'm not really sure. So currently I have nothing from Narciso in my collection, but there hasn't been anything that has come up and taken their place either. So to this day, my two favorite Narcissos are still Poudre and Rouge. Okay, so for the next house we have Valentino, and my favorite perfume of the moment from Valentino is Valentino Donna Born in Roma. I know, again, that's a very popular sort of basic one, but it's very popular for a reason. Very mass-pleasing. It's a beautiful, sweet sort of a berry vanilla with a little bit of a woody undertone, and this is a perfume that I regret letting go of, you guys. I will just 
put it out there I really regret letting go of this perfume the only reason I let it go was because I wanted my collection to be a nice concise small number and it just didn't quite make the cut when I was choosing like my top 20 it just didn't quite make the cut but I really regret letting go of this perfume because it was so feminine sexy easy just like super likable and I also had really good memories wearing this perfume like tons of good memories you guys like yeah just special special times in my life special moments with my boyfriend and I just really 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 regret letting this one go <laughs> so don't be surprised if you see this one back in my collection I will probably do a video in the future about perfumes that I never should have let go of um, and this is definitely one of those perfumes so my favorite from Valentino is Donna Born in Roma so for the next house we have clean reserve and if you guys watch my channel you already know the answer to this one the perfume that i love the most from this house is clean skin i actually still have a 100 ml bottle of this in my collection and this is a really musky sweet salty skin scent it basically just smells like clean skin it smells like you're sweet and you smell clean and fresh and incredible but doesn't really smell like a perfume very hard to explain but i can't tell you guys how many compliments i've gotten on this perfume um probably because I don't wear all my perfumes to work because we're not really supposed to wear perfume where I work but this is one that I have reached for because it doesn't really come across like a perfume however I get compliments like endlessly about this perfume when I do wear it so it has good performance good longevity people can smell it on you and it just makes you smell lovely just a really really nice perfume so definitely my favorite from this house is clean skin Okay, for the next house we have Dior, and I have to say I'm a little sad about this house because I loved Miss Dior 2017. If you guys watch my channel, you know that that is or was or still kind of is my favorite daytime perfume for women of all time. I think it still is. The reason I haven't been wearing it as much is because the bottle that I have currently open is an older bottle. It's about two years old. That perfume has been reformulated, so you cannot get it anymore. And I do have a backup bottle, which I have not opened yet. I haven't taken it out of the packaging because I wasn't sure if I even wanted to do that. I think at one point it will be sort of a vintage collector's item. I will probably be able to sell it for a pretty good amount of money if I hold on to it. Um, because in my opinion, that is the best version of Miss Dior that there ever has been. I know some people will differ in that and think that Miss Dior Cherie was the best. And the bottle that I currently have open is getting a little aged it's smelling a little aged and with that aged smell i guess it's also very strong and i find it almost a little too strong sometimes it's without a doubt one of the best performing perfumes in my entire collection um, it's one of the strongest it is also however one of the most beautiful it's very elegant it's very sweet it's floral it's sophisticated it's classy it just drips with affluence it is a beautiful beautiful fragrance I just haven't been wearing it because I started getting a little bit headachey from it because I think it's just old juice and I just don't know is it worth it to me to open a new one when I can't replace it so I just don't know if it's worth even going down that avenue however that would be my favorite Dior perfume is Miss Dior 2017 so, so that being said let's end Dior on a high note a perfume that you can still get that I love is Dior Poison Girl the Eau de Parfum not the Eau de Toilette you can still get the Eau de Parfum online if you look for it and that one is a beautiful like vanilla almond orange sickle kind of fragrance very flirty very girly very likable very mass pleasing and easy to wear that would be my second favorite perfume from Dior now let's move on to another house okay so the next house is Dolce and Gabbana and actually you guys I don't have a current favorite from Dolce and Gabbana they are just not a house that I resonate with that I find I like a lot of their perfumes the one that I probably liked the most at one point was Dolce & Gabbana the only one intense that is in the black bottle that one is kind of like a white floral fragrance and I loved it when I first smelled it and then for some reason I realized it wasn't working for me it reminded me a little bit of Rouge Malachite from Armani Privé and because of that it just didn't work um, Rouge Malachite was a perfume that just did not work for me I don't like tuberose all that much and I also had a hard time with like the sage that was in there and this only one intense was sort of like a sweeter coconut version of Rouge Malachi. Also I want to mention that Dolce & Gabbana light blue. I think that is probably their best seller ever of all time for women. I can't stand it. <laughs> so I currently don't have a Dolce & Gabbana that I actually can think of that I like.
So since I touched on Armani Privé, why don't we jump over to Armani? Oh God, okay, maybe we shouldn't do Armani because that's a lot. I actually love a lot of Armani. We'll do Armani separately. From Armani Privé, my favorite, favorite perfume, you guys know it, you already know it, Blue Turquoise. So this is another perfume that I regret selling. I passed this one on because I just didn't feel like I ever had an occasion to wear it. It is without a doubt one of the most stunning perfumes I have ever smelled in my entire life. Blue turquoise, you guys, you have to get your nose on it. It's probably not a safe blind buy. That being said, I blind purchased it in 2021 and it was one of the best blind purchases I ever did. Um, to this day, I still recommend that one and think it is one of the best perfumes I've ever smelled and I probably will replace it. I'm not going to lie. I will probably buy it again because even though I never wore it, I feel like I need it. If I'm going to collect perfumes, if I'm going to be a perfume person, that's the one I need, you guys. That is just the most beautiful, salty, vanilla, I think there's jasmine in there as well. I believe there's cypriol oil. It just smelled like the most expensive vacation I've ever been on. It smelled like I was sitting near the ocean in a lap of luxury and just living my best life. And I can't even begin to describe how much I love this scent, you guys. So Armani Privé definitely goes to Blue Turquoise. Okay, so now we can do Armani, not the Privé collection, just the original designer collection. So I have a couple that I really love from Armani. I'm going to say my top current favorite of the moment from Armani is Armani C Intense. Um, the original C, I still get questions to this day on Instagram about do I prefer the EDP or the Intense. The original has been reformulated, at least that's what I've heard. I remember when C first came out, you guys, years ago, it was amazing. It was one of the nicest perfumes I've ever laid my nose on and then I do think that it was reformulated because the one that you could get today in the stores just smells watered down it just is incredibly watered down it is not anything like what I remember it being when it first came out however the intense version is a lot more syrupy sweet seductive it's got like this boozy wine sort of quality to it it's long lasting it has good performance and for me that is the best version of C not crazy about any of the my ways the other perfume that i really like from armani one of my top top favorite of all time is discontinued unfortunately and that is armani code satin and i do have a couple of backup bottles of that one thank goodness and luckily this is the type of perfume that doesn't seem to go bad i don't know it doesn't seem to age because the bottle i have right now is actually a tester from one of my local stores and it's an old tester and it still smells fantastic the original code was very floral and very shampoo-y um, but the Armani Code Satin is amazing and I really wish they wouldn't have discontinued it so those would be my top two favorite Armani perfumes. So now let's go back to a little bit higher end and we will talk about Tiziana Terenzi. So I have been fortunate enough to actually have been sent a ton of Tiziana Terenzi perfumes. None of them ended up staying in my collection. I've done videos talking about them. They are incredible. I think that Tiziana Terenzi is an amazing house. They have some of the most high quality, expensive, beautiful smelling perfumes, but there is some sort of underlying DNA in all of the Tiziana Terenzi perfumes that just gives me almost like instant head. Headache. I don't know what it is. It must be sort of some sort of aroma chemical inherent to all of their perfumes I've noticed just about. I will say, however, though, that there is one perfume from Tiziana Terenzi that has grabbed my attention. If I ever own a Tiziana, it may very well be this one, and I'm not sure the name off the top of my head. I'm going to put, a, put the bottle on the screen. I believe it's called Spirito, Spirito Fiorentino, <laughs> something like that. It's in a red bottle, and it smells very similar to Baccarat Rouge. It has little hints or reminiscence of Baccarat Rouge, a little bit Tribeca sort of, like it's in that realm and it's incredible and I really liked it. So I'm very excited to get my decant and try that out and I will definitely do a video on that one and update you guys in the future when I get it. Other than that, there's nothing from Tiziana that has really won my heart. The next house is Marc Jacobs. Now this is a house that doesn't really impress me all that much to be very honest. Um, I will tell you what my historic favorites have been and then what I'm currently liking. So at one point I did like Decadence but that one is just a little bit too bold and too sweet for me and I just never 
reached for it so i've actually owned decadence and have let that one go back in the day like a long time ago my favorite perfume was daisy i think everybody liked daisy at one point currently the one that i think i like the most if i had to pick a mark jacobs would be perfect which is strange for me it's a complete 180 from how i felt about it when it first came out i really did not like perfect when it first came out but these days, for some reason, I'm kind of appreciating just how simple it is and how easy it is, and it's just kind of like a nice light perfume, but I haven't loved it enough to buy it or bring it into my collection. So currently, I would have to say perfect, but I still don't really love that one. The next house is Jean-Paul Gaultier. Now, this is a house that is very strong, very sort of clubby, very potent, very sexy, very young. It's kind of just like a fun clubby sort of house so for that reason i don't actually have actually anything at the moment from jean paul gaultier i did like la belle but that one was almost too sweet for me um i also had la belle le parfum the intense version my boyfriend loved that one i did not love that one it was really nice but it was again too strong i just find jean paul gaultier's fragrances are just too beast mode for me if i'm going to be honest they're just too sweet in my face loud they're just not my cup of tea at the moment. So now let's talk about Creed. So Creed is, I think, considered one of the most luxurious brands in the world. I can't stand any of the female fragrances. I know that sounds a little abrasive, but I actually get a headache, like almost instant headache from pretty much every female intended creed fragrance even aventus for him my boyfriend has that one i like that one it's nice but it's almost a little headachey for me again i think it's just something in whatever they put in their perfumes it must be some sort of a ingredient or an aroma chemical in creed's fragrances that just rubs my nose the wrong way um i did purchase wind flowers last year in june because i tested it in store and thought it was gorgeous and i thought oh my gosh i'm so excited i finally found a creed perfume and i'm gonna bring it into my collection and i'm so pumped finally gonna have a creed no you guys the second i got it home i just started noticing i was getting a headache from it it just was not gonna work out so I guess if I had to pick a favorite woman's creed, it would have been the Windflowers. Windflowers is beautiful, don't get me wrong, but there's something in it that just instantly rubs my nose the wrong way and hurts my head and I can't wear it. Um, so currently I do not have a favorite creed and I will say I cannot stand Aventus for her, can't stand it. I think that's a very polarizing scent. I think some people think it's the be all end all. I personally want to scrub it off. The second it's on my skin, I just want to go take a shower and scrub it off. So Creed Aventus for her, for me, does not work. Okay, so next we'll talk about Byredo. So Byredo is a house that I really think a lot of their fragrances are extremely artistic and very beautiful. But they're, again, for some reason, they're fragrances that I don't seem to easily be able to gravitate toward and wear. One that I really, really loved was Gypsy Water. And I actually had Gypsy Water up until not too long ago. And when I did my ultimate perfume declutter, it just didn't quite make the cut along with my top 20. But that one is probably one of my favorite from the entire house. Another one that I really liked was Sundays. That one is sort of like a citrusy cotton candy. Um, but again, that one was one that I just, it didn't end up being a favorite for me. It didn't end up sticking around in my collection. Currently, I would have to say that my favorite by Rado, the one that I am the most interested in, is actually Lil Fleur. And unfortunately for me, you guys, I don't live close enough to a Byredo counter. Like, I have to go really far away to find Byredo, like really far away. So every time I get these high-end perfumes, it's either blind or it's after sampling them or I have to literally go back to a store like after 12 months, six months, 12 months. So it's like, it's difficult for me to hone in on a favorite. So currently the one that I remember liking the most is Lil Fleur. That one was the one that piqued my interest the most the last time I was at a counter. And I remember telling myself the next time I get a Byredo, it will be Lil Fleur. So when it comes to the house of Killian, there are a lot of Killian perfumes that I absolutely love and adore. Um, one of them I believe is Intoxicated and I also think Black Phantom. Those two are amazing. They're a little bit too masculine for me. They're not the type of perfume that I think I would wear very often. So those ones I can't really say are like personal favorites, but they are some of my favorite smelling from the house. I also really liked Rolling in Love, but that one didn't stick around. That one was a little bit too powdery for me. I didn't end up keeping it, even though it was 
very beautiful and very seductive and maybe one day I'll go back and revisit Rolling in Love. I also had Love Don't Be Shy, loved it when I first unboxed it, but I never reached for it and I later realized that I had a really hard time with Neroli and I also had Love Don't Be Shy Extreme. Again, for some reason I just never wore it. So I don't know what it is about the Love Don't Be Shy perfumes, I just don't like the way they smell when I wear them. So currently I would have to say that my favorite Killian perfume is Princess. If I have to pick a Killian perfume that I love the way it smells, I like how I feel when I wear it, it smells good on me, it's easy to wear, I would have to say it's Princess. So that would be my current favorite Killian perfume. Okay, for the next house, let's talk about Maison Francis Kirk John, and of course, I will go with Baccarat Rouge. So I know that's a little bit basic, but truly that is the perfume from the entire house of MFK that I really like. There's others that I like as well that I think are really gorgeous, but just don't work out for me. For example, Grand Soir, incredible, but it's too heavy for me, it's too much for me, and it's a little bit too masculine for me. Also, Gentle Fluidity Gold, incredible, love that one, but I found it a little bit headachey. Yeah, I would have to say that Baccarat Rouge is definitely my favorite from the house. That is a perfume that I've had such a roller coaster with. Honestly, you guys, it's one of those perfumes that now I just have such an appreciation for it, and it's like every time I would go back and visit it, I would like it more and more and more, and now it's probably one of my favorite scents in my collection. It's one of the most luxurious smelling. I really like it for myself personally. So I do see the hype with that one now. It took me a long time to see the hype with that one, but now I get it. The next house is Amouage. Now, this is a house that I actually haven't found one that I love enough to bring into my collection, but I think I need to go to a perfume counter and really take some time with Amouage and actually get some more samples because you guys, I have had samples upon samples of that house. I have tried Sun what is it sunset woman no sunshine woman <laughs> sunset woman i've tried sunshine woman um that one i think is one of the more popular ones i've had samples of love T actually i've owned love tuberose love tuberose is beautiful one of the most stunning tuberose scents i've ever smelled so one of those things that i learned as i went on through my early perfume journey was that just because I love how something smells doesn't mean I'm going to be able to wear it. And that was what happened with Love Tuberose. I loved how it smelled, but I just am not a Tuberose girl. Um, I also like Lilac Love for the chocolatey component, but that one I didn't love enough to get a full bottle. So to this day, I don't have a favorite Amouage. I think I'm interested in checking out Sunshine Woman again because when I first smelled Sunshine Woman, this was back in my early, early perfume days when I was like very much a noob when it came to perfumery, especially niche perfumery. And I thought, what in the world is this and why would somebody want to smell like this? I think if I could go back and visit it now, which again, it takes me like a year to be able to go back to an Amouage counter unless I buy samples online, which then I'm looking at shipping and duties, and all this stuff. It's just like so frustrating. Don't move to Canada, you guys, I'm telling you. <laughs> I feel like if I could go back these days and try Sunshine Woman, I might really like it. Like that could be the one for me. I would really love an homage. I actually would love to have one perfume from each of the major houses, like each of the bigger houses in my collection. And homage is no exception. I just haven't quite figured out which one is the one for me yet. Okay, so for the next house, we have Mugler. I couldn't, I almost forgot about Mugler, you guys. I think just because there's not a lot from Mugler that I love, but you guys already know the answer. My favorite Mugler fragrance is Alien. Now, I still have my little bottle of Alien that I've had for so long. I have to admit, I don't wear it as much anymore, but it still is one of my favorite perfumes, and I absolutely love it. There's something about that bold, sweet, jasmine-y, woody fragrance that I just can't get enough of. It's beautiful, makes me feel very sexy and very confident when I wear it. And yeah, it just kind of was like sitting at the back of my collection. Still love it, don't want to get rid of it. It's one of my all-time favorites. I'm definitely an alien girl, not an angel girl. So that would be my favorite Mugler perfume. Okay, when it comes to Juicy Couture, my favorite perfume is definitely Gold Couture. You guys know this. I don't think that Juicy Couture is like one of the most sought after brands anymore. I think it's popular among younger people and it was also popular 
like years ago but i still love gold couture you guys i have to say it's a super flirty berry caramel fragrance it's also one of my boyfriend's favorite perfumes on me and it's one of the perfumes that makes me feel the most like flirtatious and seductive when i wear it i really have nothing else to say about it than that <laughs> i like the caramel i like that it's seductive i like that it's flirty it's also very affordable and to this day it's still one of my favorite perfumes so i don't think i'll ever not love gold couture so next we'll talk about Paco Rabanne. Paco Rabanne is not a super popular house, I don't think, but I really love Olympia. You guys already know this. Um, Olympia was one of the very first perfumes I blind purchased back when my channel was just starting out, and it turned out to be such a good purchase. I just immediately fell in love with it. I like that there's so much like pizzazz and oomph with it. It's a very like potent sort of in your face. I always tell people it's almost a little bit obnoxious. Like it's that powerful and that like, whoa, like when you spray it, it's, it's powerful. It's like a gingery, salty vanilla fragrance. I think there's some floral notes in there as well. There's something about it that I just love. That would be my favorite Paco Rabanne. I don't actually like any of the other Paco Rabanne's, Paco Rabanne perfumes at this moment. So I would have to say Olympia. Okay, moving on to YSL. I almost forgot about YSL, you guys. My favorite perfume, you're gonna just think I'm the most basic person you've ever met. It's Black Opium. I like all of the Black Opium perfumes. So currently, I actually only have a travel size of Illicit Green in my collection. That is the only Black Opium that I currently have. Although I love the Black Opiums, I don't think I need every version. I just feel like it's a bit overkill because all of the Black Opiums are so similar. They have their differences and their nuances, but they're all very similar. The original was great. The Nuit Blanche was beautiful. Loved Nuit Blanche. I also like Black Opium Neon. That one I think is the more fruity, flirty, kind of sexy nighttime clubby one i'm very interested in trying the new le parfum and i'm gonna try the le parfum that is coming out see what i think of it i also really liked black opium extreme that one was like a little bit more coffee so i think right now i'm kind of just deciding like which one is the one that i need in my collection you know like is there a black opium that i absolutely have to have in my collection so i'm gonna check out this le parfum and see how it is it's gonna be completely blind i already have it on the way some other ysl perfumes that i want to explore a little bit more is from the exclusive collection so like the tuxedo and all of those other more high-end exclusive um the private line i guess is what they're called Okay, the next house is Carolina Herrera, and I honestly don't have a favorite Carolina Herrera at the moment. Um, I have owned all of the good girls at one point, including the very good girl. That one I thought I really liked at first, and then I realized after that it wasn't what I thought it was. Um, the original good girl, that one I kind of have like a love hate. I love smelling it on paper, I love smelling it on other people, but I don't really like to wear it all that much. I haven't, I haven't found that I reached for it a whole lot. Good Girl Legere, I really liked Good Girl Legere. The Supreme was okay, but the performance could have been better. I just have not really loved them. So yeah, currently I don't really have a favorite Carolina Herrera. So I think there's another Carolina Herrera Good Girl coming out. I think it's called Good Girl Blush. Not really sure how I'm gonna feel about that one. It looks like quite a departure from the other ones. It looks like it's gonna be more fresh and floral. So I might check that one out and let you guys know how I feel about that one. So next let's talk about Tom Ford. How can I do a favorite perfumes from each house without mentioning Tom Ford? So my favorite Tom Ford perfume probably is Oud Wood. Now unfortunately Oud Wood is more unisex and in my opinion it leans more masculine but if I had to pick one of like my absolute top 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 favorite Tom Ford it would definitely be Oud Wood. You guys, that perfume just does something to me. I don't know what it is. I find it to be the most sexy perfume on the planet. It smells expensive. It smells opulent. It smells rich. It smells sophisticated. I also really like ombre leather, but again, I think that one's too masculine for me. My boyfriend wears it. He smells great in it. Um, for women's perfumes from Tom Ford, I haven't had a whole lot of luck, honestly. One that I did like was Orchid Soleil. That one is now discontinued. Um, Soleil Blanc, the Eau de Parfum specifically, I do really like that one, but that one didn't make it into my top, like, top for life, sort of. Like, when I decluttered my collection, it just didn't quite make the cut, mostly because I have trouble with coconut in perfumes. I haven't had a lot of luck with Tom Ford perfumes. Um, I've tried Rose Prick, it just wasn't my thing. I don't really like wearing Black Orchid. Velvet Orchid, I wouldn't mind going back and revisiting. Um, Santal Blush, Soleil Neige, I liked those ones, but I didn't love them enough to bring them into my collection, so I currently don't really have um, a favorite Tom Ford. What else is there? 
uh, the Rouge one, Jasmine Rouge. I actually really liked Jasmine Rouge, but not enough to bring it into my collection. So I kind of just have a hard time with Tom Ford in general from the women's side. But I guess I would have to say my two favorite, if I had to pick one for myself, it would be Soleil Blanc, the Eau de Parfum. Um, and for my boyfriend, or if I wore masculine perfumes, I would go with Oud Wood. So for the next house, let's talk about Christian Louboutin. I think this is a little bit less popular fragrance house. I don't see a ton of people talking about it, but I think because of a couple channels on YouTube, mine included, I think there's one perfume that people are starting to realize is incredible and you need it. And that would be Louboutin Rouge from Christian Louboutin. So that is my absolute favorite perfume from that house. And it's also one of my all time favorite perfumes. It's this beautiful, woody, powdery iris vanilla. It smells sophisticated, it smells like money, it smells classy, it smells opulent, it smells rich. It's sexy, um, vanillic, not too woody, but a little bit of a woodiness and a spiciness in there. There's some cardamom, incredible. I just love it. I love that perfume so much. Um, again, that one was a blind buy a couple years ago and it turned out to be one of the best blind purchases I've ever done. So definitely a uh, Luby Rouge. Okay, we're nearing the end of this video, you guys. The next house is Louis Vuitton, and my favorite from Louis Vuitton is a Trap Rev. This is another perfume that I never should have decluttered. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was just thinking it didn't quite fit into my top 20. Like, I had other grab-and-go summertime, daytime perfumes that I felt I reached for more often, and I thought, you know, I don't need a $500 bottle of perfume sitting in my collection if I don't reach for it as much as some of my other ones. But a Trap Rev is this beautiful floral, I think it's a peony fragrance. There's also some lychee in there as well, I believe. So it's like a fruity floral with a little bit of a gourmand undertone. I think there's praline, patchouli. It's just a beautiful fruity floral. It's a basic but beautiful fruity floral. Perfect for every day, perfect for the summer, perfect signature scent. Um, the bottles are incredible. They have magnetized caps. They're Louis Vuitton, which is one of my favorite brands ever, including handbags. I mean, I love Louis Vuitton. I never should have let this perfume go. Yeah, <laughs> I feel quite silly for parting ways with that one. Um, you know, but at the time, I really just wanted a smaller collection, and it didn't quite make my top my top 20 perfumes. My favorite from Louis Vuitton is definitely a Trap Rev. A close second is one that is sadly discontinued and that is why I parted ways with that one. That was Contre Moi. I decided I didn't want to fall in love with a perfume that I could not replace. I have this thing where I don't want to become attached to perfumes that I can't get again. Yeah, so that's that. So that would be the house of Louis Vuitton. And let's move on to our last couple of houses. Okay, House of Siage. Now, House of Siage, you guys, is difficult to get in Canada. I don't even know if you can get it anywhere in Canada. I know that they do ship here, but the shipping is atrocious. I almost placed an order for some samples, you guys, the other night, and I kid you not, the shipping from House of Siage to where I live was $300. So I thought, this is not happening. If I'm going to be paying you know, five or six hundred dollars for a perfume, whatever, three hundred for shipping. I'm not doing that. I'm just going to go to a counter and smell them all. So I'm very excited to go down and actually visit a counter and smell all of the House of Siage. I've never smelled any House of Siage before. I really, really, really want one in my collection. And the two that I think will probably be most my cup of tea are benevolence although that one a lot of people compare to love don't be shy and i think there's neroli in that one and so i don't want to blind buy benevolence because if it turns out to be too similar to love don't be shy i'm going to be really disappointed the other one that i think would be my cup of tea is whispers of truth i can't remember all the notes that are in that one um i think there's star anise maybe caramel vanilla i'm not even can't remember all the other ones but that one looks like it'll be my best bet i almost blind purchased whispers of truth but again, the shipping was atrocious. I just couldn't justify the shipping. When I go down to Bloomingdale's or Neiman Marcus, I'm gonna go actually to a House of Siage counter, spend a good amount of time sniffing, and I'm gonna come home with a cupcake. <laughs> Mark my words, I will come home with a cupcake, but at $500 or $600 a bottle and the atrocious amount they wanted for shipping, I am not blind buying that puppy. Okay, let's quickly do Lancome. My favorite Lancome perfume would probably be La Vie Belle, but maybe the Intensement version. Um, I did have La Vie Belle, the original. I loved it at one point, but these days it is just too strong for me. I can't do it. It's too potent. It's 
sickly sweet for me. It just is too much. I can't do L'Ivier Belle anymore, even though I think it's an incredible perfume. One that I think I could do is the L'Ivier Belle Intense Mint. That one is a little bit more sweet. It's not so powdery. It's not so patchouli. It's just a little bit more gourmandy, raspberry sort of. It's beautiful. It's feminine. It's mass pleasing. I do like L'Ivier Belle Intense Mint quite a lot. And I think that would be my favorite Lancome fragrance. Let's quickly touch on Gucci because I haven't mentioned them yet. My favorite Gucci perfume is Gucci Guilty, the original. So not the newer releases, not the ones that come in like the tall sleek bottles that look like a flask. I like the ones that were in the old gold GG bottles. Those ones unfortunately are discontinued. The new ones I find are still very beautiful, but not as potent as the original. So I am an original OG Gucci Guilty Girl. I actually have Gucci Guilty, um, the diamond edition, which pretty much smells like all of the Gucci Guilties. It's just like in a different bottle. Very pretty. I like it. Um, I think it's a timeless scent. It's kind of like in the hall of fame of great perfumes. If you watched perfume videos, you know, five or 10 years ago, everybody had Gucci Guilty. It was like everyone's favorite perfume. So that would be my favorite from the house of Gucci. Okay, let's quickly touch on Victor and Rolf. You guys, I almost forgot Victor and Rolf. You guys already know my favorite fragrance from Victor and Rolf is Flower Bomb. I also really liked Ruby Orchid, but it was a little bit too sweet for me. And Flower Bomb Nectar was much too sweet for me. I really, really love my Flower Bomb. I think I will always have Flower Bomb in my collection. Um, that one is a top 10 for life. So that's all I have to say about Victor and Rolf. All right, we're going to end this video pretty quickly. It's already just about an hour long. Let's end it off with a couple of really affordable houses or brands. So let's talk about Bath & Body Works. What is my favorite Bath & Body Works fragrance or body spray? And that would be Strawberry Pound Cake. I know it's crazy. When I first smelled Strawberry Pound Cake, I thought this is too gourmand. This is too sweet. It smells too much like an actual cake. However, what changed my mind with Strawberry Pound Cake was when I was actually out at a store shopping. I've already told you guys this story in another video. I was actually out shopping and the girl who was helping me with the clothing walked by me and she smelled so good and so sweet. And I said, excuse me, you smell amazing. Can I ask what you're wearing? And she said, oh, believe it or not, it's Strawberry Pound Cake. And I was like, okay, say no more. If that's how I smell when I wear it, then I do want that one. So I actually really love Strawberry Pound Cake, and I also really like layering that one with Vanilla Bean Noel. So those are probably my two current favorite Bath & Body Works fragrances is Strawberry Pound Cake and Vanilla Bean Noel. Okay, while we're talking about body sprays, let's talk about Sol de Janeiro for a moment. You guys already know my favorite Sol de Janeiro fragrance is Shirosa 62. I have the body spray version. I also have a travel size of the perfume. In my opinion, it's not really worth getting the perfume because the perfume doesn't last really a lot longer. In fact, I think I get probably better longevity from the lotion and the body spray than I do the perfume. So I have the perfume in a travel size just because it's easy to throw in my bag and take with me if I'm going out overnight or something like that. Um, but I don't really wear the perfume. When I'm at home, I like to use the body spray and when I'm on vacation or going away for the weekend, the body lotion that I like to bring with me is actually a mixture of the 62 and the Coco Cabana. So I mix the the Boom Boom Cream and the Coco Cabana Cream. I mix those two together. That is my like travel lotion. And let me tell you that combination is absolute man killer. But if I'm going to wear one by itself, it's the 62. 71 I really liked, but it was a little bit too rich for me. It was a little too much like by the fireplace vibe. And the 40 I actually really like, but I use that one for the gym. So that's kind of currently like my gym scent. It's like a sweet vanilla plum woody uh, fruity fragrance, but I only use the 40 for the gym at the moment. And for the very last one, you guys, let's just quickly talk about Victoria's Secret because Victoria's Secret's very affordable and I do think that they're not something to be slept on. They actually have some really nice scents. My favorite Victoria's Secret body spray of all time currently is the Bare Vanilla Golden. So I have had the original Bare Vanilla. Bare Vanilla Golden is very similar to the original, but it has this sort of like warm, like toasted almond floral quality to it and it's very very nice it's super sexy incredible longevity compliment getter a little bit more sophisticated than some of the other perfumes that you can get and some of the other body sprays from victoria's secret so my hands down current favorite from victoria's secret is bare vanilla golden 
So you guys, that is it for today's video. This was a really long video, and I know that I probably did miss some perfume houses, some pretty common ones. Um, I almost forgot about Victor and Rolf and Gucci, so let me know down below if there are other houses you want me to do a continuation or a part two. I know this was a super long video, so for those who stuck with it, then thank you so much. Um, hopefully this was a little bit enjoyable for you to listen to, and thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in my next one. Bye for now.